Music videos are ways that bands and artists can bring their words to life. These visuals are often very exciting and keep the viewer engaged all the way until the very end. With every beautiful music video though, you'll also get those transgressive, going against the grain ones added into the mix. So, with the help of my friend Aaron from Morbid for Fun, we're going to be looking into the weirdest, disturbing, creepiest music videos that are out there. Feel free to take a few guesses in the comments on what I'm going to be discussing in this video. Or maybe what I should have covered if you already are taking a peek at the chapters. Anywho though, let's dive in. Virgin Turtle Horror Existencia Our first song comes from the bands named Virgin Turtle Horror. Yeah, you heard me right. This band actually doesn't have much information about them on the internet, so I'm gonna try to piece together a few things that I found out from like Bandcamp, YouTube, and whatnot. The band formed in 2004, and they described their sound as true grindcore, non-vegan, hobo cheese friendly, mellow post doom gaze. Whatever that means. I fear this is what I sound like when I'm describing what a band sounds like to my friends. I'm just like, yeah, they're like doom, mellow, post, gaze, shoe, rock. And they're like, D was any of that even English? Anywho, this band absolutely does contain a lot of elements of grindcore. So if you like bands such as like uh, Terrorizer, Napalm Death, and maybe like Worm Rot, uh, these dudes would definitely be up your alley, assuming you like grindcore. While their sound might entice you, their music videos are on a whole other level. In December of 2012, the band would release an album by the name of Evolution. This contained the song Existencia and had a music video released alongside it. The video showcases a lot of things. Like, for example, it shows animals being absolute jerks to humans, like getting near them, harassing them, biting them and whatnot. It's kind of funny in some of those parts, but um, I left out the most crucial part of this entire video. This video has a lot of animal banging. I'm talking like this video is like 80, 90% animals going at it. It is a grotesque amount of birds and the bees stuff happening. <laughs> Actually, birds and the bees. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little conflicted on this video and whether or not I should be adding it into the list. Because a lot of these metal bands, they make these like crazy controversial music videos so that way they can get people to be like, oh my gosh, metal bands are ruining society and they're ruining your kids. They're gonna turn you into blah, 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 right? But this almost feels comedic in its delivery. So it's like, I don't know if this should be on the list. I don't know, like, when you watch the music video, it just kicks in so abruptly. It just happens so fast that it's almost funny. So I don't know. I don't know how to classify this. I'm just calling it creepy and weird. I, I don't know. Oh, also, another thing that just blows me away is the fact that, like, someone had to sit down and make this. Like, th like, like this didn't just appear in the ether of the internet and it's like, oh, here's this music video. Someone sat down in a video editing program and made this. Someone gathered the clips necessary for this video. The fact that this took effort is just, I guess what astounds me. Affects twin come to daddy. If you're into the music scene, you should have seen this one coming. And that is Affex twin come to daddy. And if you got a music video directed by Chris Cunningham, you are in for a wild ride. Richard D. James, the man behind Offex Twin, is primarily known as one of the most important artists in the ambient techno and breakbeat electronic scene. This breakbeat style especially shines through in his song, Come to Daddy. In interviews, Richard notes that this song was practically a joke. It wasn't meant to go anywhere, be taken seriously, or be interesting at all. Come to Daddy came out while I was just hanging around my house getting pissed, and doing this crappy death metal jingle. Then it got marketed and a video was made. And this little idea that I had, which was a joke, turned into something huge and it wasn't right at all. It appeared that Richard was frustrated that this song that was supposed to be a joke was doing pretty well. So he claims that he removed the record from circulation for roughly a week to prevent the song from going to the number one spot. And as a result, it peaked at 36 and in my opinion, if you make something that you do not like, you can easily take it down, but preventing it to hit number one, I mean, you're still gonna put it out the next week later, so might as well hit the number one spot, but hey, you know, if you didn't like it, then 
it still peaked at 36, so he at least gained something from it. Moving on to the visual aspect of the song, it is absolutely wild and has a reputation it does for a good reason. The video details an older woman walking her dog through this dingy industrial landscape that looks like a post-apocalyptic world. There's trash strewn about in the area and it doesn't look well kept. The dog then uses the bathroom on an abandoned TV. Shortly after doing so, the TV springs to life and a distorted and garbled shot of Richard is displayed. Richard begins to recite the lyric of the song as a group of children bearing Richard's face begin to cause a bunch of chaos in the area. The TV is eventually placed in a barren room and this wet skinny white figure emerges from the television. The figure then proceeds with distorted peaking vocals to scream at the old lady. Once the climax of the song stop, it then cuts to the figure with wide arms as the children surround it. And by the way, I feel like these aren't even children. Like those are like haunted Oompa Loompas. Like they're not gonna lie dude, they're pretty disturbing and it's just pure nightmare fuel. This entire video is pretty good and personally I do like the song, it's alright. I'm not really into that genre but hey, you know, it has a pretty cool jingle to it. But the actual music video itself, it's cool but it's disturbing to me. Especially with those demon kids or whatever it's supposed to be with Richard's face. That is nightmare fuel and if I see them, dude. If I see them running towards me, I have no idea what I'll do. Chris Cunningham has done other work with Richard such as Rubber Johnny. The editing and animation are really good. And Cunningham, he really knocks it out of the park. Not gonna lie, Kaden, that last line was pretty cheesy. Witherberry, the IE slash EP song. This next song comes from the artist Witherberry. And I'm going to keep it real with all of you. I couldn't just contain this to one song. So this is probably going to be like 20 to 30% of the video is me talking about not only one song, but a few songs and a bunch of background to this artist. Cause I just couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Okay. Witherberry, as cited by his band camp, says that he creates dubstep slash EDM music that is dedicated to his family. After seeing his music videos, I'm a little unsure how this is supposed to be the case. I think this entire thing is a bit, like how Eric Andre will stay in character no matter how weird or crazy it gets. Anyway, for the song IE slash EP song, Thaddeus Duval, the song's creator, is just naked. Just absolutely naked. Like, but booty naked filming this music video. The video shows Duval in various locations within his living room, basically acting out and sort of bringing to life a lot of the instruments that are played in the song. He acts out drum parts, percussive elements, synth leads, and basically anything in the song he's acting out. And he does all of this just dong out. There's actually moments in this song where you can like, see him act out synth noises and he kind of like jumps a little bit like he's a little bouncy and you can see it just just flopping about just flopping about as if this wasn't weird and bizarre enough shortly after the drop in the song duval proceeds to lather on his face what appears to be human excrement I literally have no idea what else it could be. It doesn't look like peanut butter. Doesn't look like chocolate. It looks... I... Oh my god. Additionally, his haircut. Just the way he stares into my soul. This isn't even a joke. I feel like he's looking right into my soul. It freaks me out. Additionally, he also has other projects. Obviously, this is not on YouTube. This is on Vimeo. There's no way YouTube would allow any of this. But anyway, there's another project of his on Vimeo. In the next song of his called the SSDP song, it's basically the same premise as the last one, but this time he's in public. And yes, it's exactly what you think it is. He's again, butt booty naked in public filming this stuff. I initially wanted to say that it was green screened, like, there's no way this dude's out in public, but when you look at him and you see the way the light reflects off of his skin, he's 1000% in public. 
Also, his hairstyle is even more abysmal now. One half has hair, the other half doesn't, and that's also carried down through almost his entire body. I think it gets a little bit mishmashed as it gets towards like the lower stomach area, but generally speaking, it's it looks like 50-50. <laughs> he also has hearts, like red hearts written across him and marker. I don't know what's going on in this video. I'm gonna keep it real. I wish I could get in this man's head though, because I want to see what's going on. Also, the song is oddly uplifting. I don't know, it just feels like it's raising your spirits. It's so, it's such a mishmash from what you're seeing on the screen. I unironically feel like I'm the butt of an Eric Andre skit. Like, you know how like Eric Andre's and like maybe like Borat stuff feels funny because like, oh, you're watching this dude basically not necessarily harass innocent people, but you're basically that's kind of what it is. It's like, wow, this dude's going out in public doing this bombastic stuff. But it's funny because, you know, it's a joke and it's a bit, but these poor people around you just don't realize what's going on. <laughs> So as I began to delve deeper into the Duval rabbit hole, I found 17 whole videos on his Vimeo account, and all of them are absolutely insane. So you remember earlier how I was speculating on whether or not Duval was like rubbing human excrement on his face and I couldn't really figure it out? Well, I am now with 1000% certainty that it was human yeah. In the video, Gay Rights, Civil Rights, Free the Children, Duval is laying on the ground face up as a person hovers above him, squatting, squatting down, is hovering there, you know what, above his face, and then just begins to unleash on Duval. Lord help me. He also has these Borat-esque videos that are uploaded on his Vimeo page. One of them features him going into a frat house naked, asking a dude about terrorism. They proceed to get kicked out, and then it cuts to him streaking what appears to be on campus. And then it cuts to a low-res picture of Ellen as the text women's rights flashes across the screen as my neck my back plays in the background. It honestly feels like an Eric Andre skit and it feels like a fever dream. To tack on, yes I know I'm talking about this dude so much, I told you this would take up like 20% of my video. To tack on even more stuff, this dude has actually played live shows, like real people paid real money to go see this dude live. I'm not even joking, like an actual concert. This man has performed. He's gotten on stage and rapped. I know I pivoted off a lot from the initial music video, but like, I, I feel like I had to. I feel like it was a it was a necessity. But anyway, Duval, wherever you are right now, I hope you're happy and I hope, I just hope you're doing okay, man. Anywho, I'm done now, let's move on. The Prodigy, smack my b up. I have no idea why I said it like that, it just came out. But our next song is from a group called The Prodigy. This band primarily focuses on electronic dance music, but is mainly associated with breakbeat elements that appear within the music. Unfortunately for them, good music doesn't absolve them from making the list of the most disturbing music videos. The song, Smack My B Up, comes from their album, The Fat of the Land, and is regarded as a very controversial song, and it is controversial for two main reasons. The controversial part of this is the lyrical content, and the music video itself. The lyrics have been cited as misogynistic because people think that they're saying to hit women. The band has explicitly stated that this is a complete misunderstanding and is actually meant to be misunderstood as doing something intensely. 
Many radio stations refused to play the song, and the only instances where it was played were only if it was the lyric-free version, and it was often said by a different name, which was Smack for short. Liam Howlett, one member of the band, said, If no radio station is going to play their song, might as well make a music video that no one will play either. The entire music video is basically one giant binge of alcohol and drugs from the point of view of the main character. It really is a very chaotic and disorientating video. After a shower, our main character takes a swig of alcohol, does a line, and then heads out to the bar. Once they're at the bar, that's where things go crazy. The character proceeds to essay multiple women, attack a few men, and destroy furniture and equipment before running off to the bathroom to vomit. Once inside, our character indulges in multiple drugs before heading off to a gentleman's club. Once inside, our character drinks some more and brings a woman home. The main character and the girl do their thing, and then she eventually heads out afterwards, and then it is revealed that the main character was a woman the whole time and then she proceeds to black out on the bed, and then the video ends. You can't find this music video on YouTube for obvious reasons, boobies. But yeah, this music video is out there on the internet, but it is not on YouTube. And Nightcrime, I am so sorry that I can't memorize a script for sh** because I had to be looking down at the script to read the full thing, so... Good luck on finding some type of b-roll footage that is relevant to show on screen because, yeah, I can't memorize the script for shit, and I've just been looking down and reading the script, so uh, good luck on editing. Shoo Shoo. Dear God, I hate myself. This next song comes from a band by the name of Shoo Shoo, and to be honest with you, I don't really know how to classify Shoo Shoo. They're super experimental with a lot of spoken word elements, splashes of electronic and avant-garde, a lot of art pop, I guess. In a way, it, they're, they're really such a unique band with their sound, and in all honesty, their album, Dear God I Hate Myself, is no exception. Part of the release of the album was to have the title track have a music video released alongside it. The video is absolutely repulsing. It's just disgusting. It's interesting too because it's not even a changing shot. It's just continuously shot on a tripod pointed at the two members of the band. The video depicts band members Angela and Jamie sitting beside each other. Jamie, who is barely poking into frame, is seen eating a chocolate bar. Beside him is Angela, who is reaching her hand down her throat to make herself vomit. Eventually, Angela makes herself vomit. Not once, but another time. On to Jamie. It's so gross. You can see as the music video goes further and further that Angela's mascara is just streaking down from her face. It's, ugh, it's, it's so gross. Like, I feel like I can handle a lot, but that I'm just, oh gosh. And you can see, like, obviously she doesn't want to, I think. It, it's just, oh God, you can just tell she, uh, I, I, I don't have words. It's just disgusting. It is a disgusting music video. And it's crazy too, because it's not even shocking in the way that like, oh, look how much like blood and guts we can splash onto the screen. Yeah, aren't we crazy and edgy? It's just a human making themselves vomit, but it's just, ugh, it's so gross. It's so gross. I also think that like, the shaky and almost uncertain delivery of Jamie's vocals on the track just, it just doesn't help. Shoo Shoo's dope though. I, I like their music. Their music videos though? I feel like that's a different story. Music videos are often ways that an artist can express themselves in ways that words just can't. Other times it's just a method for artists to say, screw it man, what's the craziest stuff we can throw into a video? Is there something you think I missed though? There's a lot of music videos out there. I know I'm bound to have missed something. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Before we hop in the end segment though, I would like to thank my Tormented Knights and my Knighted Patrons. For my Tormented Knights, we have Andrea, EB Agent J, James, Nee, Willow, Shyla. For my Knighted Patrons, we have Cherisy, Emma, Jessica, Lucino, Lucas, Poet, Shizen, Teddy, Timo. <gasps> oh my God. 
Thank you guys so much for your really generous support. It honestly means so much to me, and I hope you guys do understand that. Thank you all. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the video, why not like and subscribe? It definitely helps me out. If you didn't, though, why not dislike? And let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all in the next one.